Let us look now at 11.3, something called rotational inertia. So what do you think this refers to if we talk about rotational inertia? Well, we know about inertia in, in, in the sense of kind of straight line motion, that inertia is something that resists um, a change in velocity. So um, F equals MA, <coughs> so your <coughs> your acceleration equals f over m so your change in velocity is a function of your of your inertia okay so let's see let's open this guy up i don't know why it's not opening up there we go sorry okay let's so we know that acceleration is some of your forces over your inertia. So your inertia, the higher your inertia, the lower your acceleration, the lower your inertia, for the same forces, right? The lower your inertia, the higher your acceleration. Okay? <clears throat> so now we want to look at rotational inertia. So again, it's, the idea is a resistance to rotation. So uh, the inertia that we know about is a resistance to translation, but what about the resistance of an object to rotate? That is, I'm just trying to give you a, an intuitive understanding. So the way that we're going to look at this and, and study this is to look at the changes in rotational velocity. We're going to look at, at rot changes in rotational velocity. So if we consider these two s setups, we have um, a setup with one cable. So there's a puck attached to a cable, and as you can see, it can move in a circular motion. And we have another puck C, so this is puck B and puck C. Puck C has got a radius of RC, and it moves in this kind of motion. Okay? Now, um, if we if we hit puck B and puck C and they move with the same velocity, okay, the same velocity, they're both moving at the same velocity, we know that um, puck B will have a larger rotational speed because, um, because its radius is smaller, it will go through a larger angle than than C. So both B and C are going with the, through, uh, with the same velocity, but B goes through a larger angle than C. As you can see, delta theta C is, much, is smaller than, de and, than delta theta, theta B, okay? Which means that this guy's rotational speed is larger than this guy's rotational speed. Now the, th the point here is that if I were to um, get this guy's rotational speed up to this guy's rotational speed, then I would need to what? I would need to hit it by a considerably faster moving puck, A. Okay? So, put differently, it is more difficult. This is, this is where we're trying to get at. It is more difficult to change this guy's rotational velocity um, than it is to change this guy's rotational velocity. Okay, so it might not be so clear to see, but the closer the mass is to the axis of rotation, the easier it is to change the velocity, which means that its resistance to change is lower <coughs> with this guy than this guy. This guy's resistance to change its rotational velocity is higher because, more, because this mass is positioned further away from the axis of rotation. So um, let's look at this now. So what does this say? It says it, the results suggest that an object's rotational inertia its resistance to 
to change its, uh, its rotational velocity depends on its location relative to the axis of rotation. The greater the distance between the, the bulk of an object's material and the axis of rotation, the larger its rotational inertia. Okay? So, what are some examples of this? Okay, so here's a, a hammer. Alright? So, if we consider a hammer, uh, we know that the center of mass of, of an object is basically a point in space or on the object where it is as if all the inertia, all the mass, all the inertia was concentrated at this point. So if we hold the hammer here and we try to rotate this hammer around this point, you agree that it's going to be much more difficult to do that than if we held the hammer at the, at the center of mass. It's much easier to rotate um, the hammer if you're holding it there than if you're holding it there. Why is that? Because more mass is located further away from the axis of rotation. In this point, uh, in this picture, the, the axis of rotation is there, the mass is there. In this point, the axis, in this picture, the axis of rotation is there and the mass is there. Okay? So how, how do these compare to this? In this case, the mass is further away from the axis of rotation. So it'll be more difficult to change this guy's uh, rotational velocity than this guy because its mass is, is located closer. Okay? Um, so what are some examples? Well, we just saw an example with the, with the hammer. Um, but skaters. Skaters reduce their rotational inertia, their resistance to change their, their, rot their rotation. By what? By holding their arms close to their bodies. Okay? Let me see if I can um, get a picture. Let's see if I can get an image of a, a picture here. No. It's okay. Um, and so the closer that it, it's in, the quicker they're going to spin. The further their arms are out, the slower they're going to spin. I hope that makes sense. So this action moves more of your inertia away from... So if you're trying to balance on a beam, this action removes, uh, moves more of your inertia away from the rotation of axis. And so it increases your rotational inertia which in, t in turn increases your resistance to rotating off a beam. Okay? Let's see. Um, just bear with me. I'm going to try to bring in an image here. Okay? So, here you've got these tight, tight rope walkers. Okay? So, this person doesn't want to fall off, right? They don't want to. They don't want to. They they don't want to fall off. So they spread out the mass further away from the axis of rotation, so that it is more difficult for them to to rotate and fall off. Okay, all right. Okay, sorry that was a bit messy, but I hope it helps.